Scientists, this is Mr. B with another edition, another year of Weird Science Wednesdays. Welcome back. This year, the Learning Lab is reaching out to all the Hamilton City schools, teachers, and students in search of official field correspondence to share in the love of science. So, our first correspondents are Riverview Elementary's own Mrs. Rudolph and her nephew Robbie from up in Holland, Michigan. Before we connect with them, though, I would like for you to answer the following question. Of these three cups, which cup is full, which cup is half, which cup is empty? Take a second to look and think about it. Now back to Holland, Michigan. I'm in Holland, Michigan with my nephew, Robbie. Hi. And we are playing in the pool today, and we were wondering if we put a bucket in the water, could you stick your head in it and still breathe, or would it fill up with water? Homer bucket, you can get at Home Depot. And we're gonna stick it in the water. We're gonna let a little water in and push it straight down. Now Robbie's gonna swim underneath and take you with him. We're still there. I want you to hear from the outside what I hear. with water and Robbie sticks his head in and breathes, what would happen to the water that's already inside the bucket? Have the bucket filled up with water, I'm going to flip it over. Robbie's going to go under. Pay attention to the water line, which is about right here right now. It's going to go down every time Robbie takes a breath. Ready? Robbie, are you okay? Yep. Robbie? What? I wonder what happened to the water. How can he breathe now? Mr. B, can you help explain that to everybody? We're ready yet. Why don't we try an experiment? Well, I think that's a great idea, Kamora. So let's go ahead and do an experiment, one that everyone can do at home. All you'll need for this is a bucket of water, a cup, and some Kleenex. First, fill the bowl with water and place the tissue inside the cup. Turn the cup upside down and push it down inside the bowl of water. Carefully remove the cup and then check your tissue. What do you notice? Well, the tissue is dry. Why is this? So when I went under and all this, I, I released carbon dioxide into the bucket, which forced out the water because of the air pressure in here. The tissue experiment's the same that Robbie and Mrs. Rudolph created with the bucket. It's actually called a diving bell. In the 16th century, or the 1500s, people began using diving bells to collect sponges and oysters and different things they could find on the ocean floor. They would fill the bell with air, sink it into the water, and then swim down, returning to the bell only when they needed to take a breath of air. This works because air is matter, meaning it has mass, and it takes up space. In the cup, or the bell, can only hold so much, either air or water. If it's full of air, there's no room for water, and vice versa. The Earth is made up of 71% water, and since the beginning of time, humans have been intrigued by mysteries under the sea. In fact, Herodotus, way back in 500 BC, told the story of Silas, a Greek sailor who used a reed, or a long straw, to breathe as he cut the mooring lines of Persian ships. This was a battle. But until the 20th century, which is the beginning of the 1900s, humans were only able to go as far as their lungs would let them, leaving several mysteries in the deep blue sea. Well, that is until 1942, an oceanographer, which is someone who studies the oceans, and French Naval Lieutenant Jacques Cousteau helped create a self-contained underwater breathing apparatus 
that allowed humans to breathe oxygen while underwater. Cousteau based his scuba design on old, heavy, and dangerous underwater equipment that was connected to a boat to provide breathable air and primarily used for underwater combat and fishing, kind of like the diving bell. Now humans could breathe air and swim freely underwater. Can you imagine how exciting that must have been? So let's get back to the original question. Which one of these cups is full, which is half full, and which is empty? Considering the air has mass and takes up space, couldn't you argue that all three cups, in fact, were full? Think about that for a moment. During times when you feel like life is unfair, think about all that you do have, and that instead of appearing empty, your cup is really completely full. It's science, pretty much. That's science. That's science. science. Read more about the mysteries of the ocean in your school's library. Also, check out Jules Verne's fictional story called 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It's one of my personal favorites.